Greetings Ivy Artists, today we'll be discussing So it's just after the harvest moon yesterday and uh, people are busy uh, picking grapes and stuff in the vineyards around us so there might be a bit of noise but anyway, so today I thought I'd focus on how do you actually start your IB art course. So you probably have now been gathering stuff over the summer, preparing for your actual course to begin. Hopefully you've gathered a lot of information. If you've watched any of my other videos, then you know how to kind of prepare by going to visit galleries, by drawing lots. And by just kind of thinking of ideas of uh, what to do for your two-year IB art course. So um, it can be quite daunting to come back and to actually um, be in a position where you're not really sure about how to begin. So today I thought I would kind of give you some suggestions. You don't have to follow these. And obviously I don't want to be contradicting any of your teachers because they are really your main guides in this uh, subject. But I think sometimes you also need a little bit of extra support, especially when you're at home and you're thinking, I'm not really sure what I'm supposed to be doing in the classroom. So I'm going to give you general suggestions that you may think about. So one of the first things that I do want to emphasize is that... Um, Skills on this course are extremely important. So things like drawing skills, it should be a skill that you are constantly improving, constantly practicing. Even though we are in an age where everything is in a digital format, um, it's still you are still being uh, actually marked on the skills that you have, the basic skills of art. Uh, which helps you to communicate in the visual language of art, which is drawing, painting, photography, sculpture, uh, basically anything that is kind of um, communicating in a visual way. Hopefully you've been drawing lots uh, over the summer. That's really a very, very good idea. Uh, so now you're back and you've got all this kind of information and you're thinking about, okay, so what do I actually do with all this stuff? Usually how I would start the course with my students is to really go through the criteria of the course in great detail. Um, if you don't understand the criteria very well, then you're not likely to succeed on the course because you need to understand what is actually required of you. Um, this doesn't mean that you're going to be you know, completely clear about what you're actually doing during the first week. It doesn't really work like that. It's probably, you will probably need at least a year to fully understand what each criteria means and what each criteria requires. Uh, but, so while the, the teacher or whoever is teaching you um, is, is going through these criteria and explaining to you what is actually uh, asked of you for each criterion, um, it is probably a good idea for you to be doing stuff at the same time, stuff like drawing. So if you have watched my other videos, you would have come across the fact that I actually encourage students to have some kind of a theme over the two years that they're working with. Uh, not You don't have to do this, this is not a requirement, but I think uh, it actually helps you focus a little bit more and it also helps with the coherence of your work. So if you have decided to, to go with a theme, what I really encourage you to do is to try and find objects that are related to that theme. So you might think, well, I'm not really sure what that theme is at this moment. It doesn't matter if it's still quite vague and it doesn't mean that you have to have objects that you know, will really define your theme at this point, that you have to stick to them for the next two years. But I think it's a good starting point. It's good to have a very practical thing uh, that can kind of start you off on this discovery over the two years. So try and find objects that are somehow related to what you want to explore. 
so what do I mean by this? So, um, for example, if one of your themes, or if you think you might be exploring something like, let's say, feminism, then think of objects that can somehow be related to that theme. Again, it doesn't have to be a definitive decision, but just start thinking of a few objects that could be related to this theme. Uh, or if you are, for example, um, thinking of uh, doing a political theme, for example, uh, something or let's say you're, you're looking at a social injustice theme. What kind of objects could possibly symbolize uh, or, or be related to the topic that you're exploring? Or let's say that you are exploring a certain phobia, for example, or something that you have anxiety about. I don't know, it could be very personal, it could be very, very general. So what I'm saying is try and collect images. I would say a minimum of three objects and, and you know, then maybe build up to, to a few more, but minimum of three, I would say, that can start you off, that can, you can actually have in front of you and draw and explore visually. Um, and that way you have a starting point because when you're working that's when the best ideas will come to you when you're sitting around trying to think of a really great idea it's not gonna come if you're working through that action of actually committing to something and exploring and, and struggling with something great ideas will come so it's really important that you start working straight away. For this exercise, some teachers will actually set up um, a, a still life for you and start the course in this way, which is fine. The, the reason why I think that it's actually better to um, pick your own objects is because I think that gets you thinking about what you actually want to do for your body of work straight away. You're more engaged that way. But again, there's nothing wrong with having a still life that's already set up for you. One of the uh, artists that I, I really, really love using at this point in the course, which is the beginning of the Ivy course, the beginning of year one, is Jim Dine. Uh, Jim Dine has absolutely amazing skills. Uh, and it's really interesting because his his work, especially uh, a lot of his drawing work, um, really mixes this kind of precision of, of having, you know, these fantastic skills with distortion. So it is a great kind of starting point to really look at the work of an artist who, through drawing, really explores not only the, the kind of the skills of observational drawing, uh, uh, you know, which is drawing that is uh, tries to be as accurately representative of what you're looking at as closely as possible. But he also kind of plays around with lots and lots of aspects of representing uh, whatever he's drawing through um, messing around and pushing the limits of the elements and principles of art. So uh, through looking uh, at his work uh, by, by and, lo and looking at the playfulness that he applies to the elements and principles of art. It's a great way to think about your own work and how you are going to do that uh, with the objects that you're drawing. Um, you know, so by all means draw from different angles. Really look at his work in a way that um, is very, very analytical. Look at you know the elements uh, in in great detail. How does he use line? How does he use color? How is he uh, introducing variety? How does he achieve balance, or or does he actually try and tip balance on purpose? Uh, look at the negative space compared to the positive space. Look at how he creates rhythm. Look at how he creates how he plays with scale, proportion, right? Uh, so all these things, and really go into it deeply. It's not, you know, it may feel like an MYP or a GCSE project at first, 
But the deeper you go into it, the more, uh, the more you find out that there's so much there. You could be studying one artist for the rest of your life and you'd still find it engaging. There would still be things to discover. So really go into it. Once you've kind of really looked at the visual language that he uses and the visual language that he plays with, go into his symbolism. Why is he um, using, you know, things like tools or why is he use, drawing Pinocchio over and over again? Uh, why does he, you know, uh, what are his self-portraits about? Uh, these are really interesting questions. Uh, try and think about how he constructs meaning. You know, how does he construct meaning out of drawing a hammer over and over again? What is that about? How is he succeeding to communicate that meaning? Why do you find looking at, you know, a series of hammer drawings engaging and so forth? Because when you're asking questions and you're trying to find these answers and you're trying to kind of analyze things, that's when you're learning and you're thinking about your own work. My suggestion would be to start with really trying to understand the criteria of the course while you're doing that, make sure that you are actually doing something, that you're not just sitting around feeling confused. Think about what you want to explore over the next two years and try and actually find objects that are somehow related to what you want to do. It doesn't have to be, like I said, a major decision do you know make it a meaningful exercise i'm not saying grab the first three things out of your bag do think about it but what i'm saying is you're not committed to it for the next two years and then play around with what you actually want to do with the drawings on one hand you want to really really practice your skills so that you know your drawings are as precise as possible that you're as fluent in the language of art and drawing as possible and on the other hand you want to start playing around with the elements and principles of art okay and once you've done that once you're in the middle of this ideas will come you you'll kind of think of well I really want to explore this and I really want to look at this from this angle uh, use things like photography you know to, to kind of support your work uh, definitely use editing programs, you know, as sophisticated as Photoshop or as basic as something online. Uh, you know, play around with these images and really, really push them to the limits. And from this, I guarantee you will have a body of work emerging, you know, slowly but surely. Um, I think year one or the first year of IB Art really should be about experimentation and about um, really exploring things so that by the end of the first year you feel very very confident with your skills with the, your skill of communicating through the visual language and uh, of, of knowing what your work is actually about what it is that you're exploring okay so give yourself plenty of opportunities so that you are confident at the end of the first year uh, in the future, I will be doing more videos on uh, the elements and principles of art. I think that's really, really important, even though it's very basic. Uh, you know, but the sky's the limit, really, because that's the foundation of the visual language. Uh, I will also be doing a kind of a timeline of the two years, just a rough one, so that you know uh, where you're supposed to be uh, at, at kind of specific points in the course uh, and of course the the following the the videos following this one will be really focusing on the criteria not very exciting but very very important like i said if you don't understand the criteria well it's really very difficult to actually succeed on the course uh, if you know if you don't really grasp the essence of what it is that you're supposed to be doing on this course Right. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, to the subscribers that I have, thank you so much. I feel, you know, less alone. So thank you very much. And, uh, you know, hopefully this is 
useful. Um, feel free to like, share, subscribe, etc. Okay, thank you very much. See you soon. Thank you.